G'day everybody, how are you going today? I do hope that you are super well. Yes indeed, it is that time. The time to talk about my first year with the Z9. Now, I've been in this game for over 30 years. I've used a lot of different cameras from a lot of different brands. And this camera is something very special. This is a camera that I don't think will ever stop me from achieving whatever I want to achieve. Whether that's high frame rates with birds or sport, whether it's an art style shot late at night, handheld with a 50 mil lens, 1.2, we've got the resolution and the in-body image stabilization to cover those sort of needs. Whether it's video, whether it's 4K 120, or whether it's 8K 60 frames per second in RAW, and so much more. This camera not only has what it takes technologically, but something super important to me is it has what it takes ergonomically. In this video, I just wanna share with you some of the highlights. I wanna share with you how the camera has evolved, and I wanna share with you ultimately, what do I think? Is it worth the money? And because people are interested, from my perspective, how does it compare with the market as a whole. Let's dive into one year with the Nikon Z9. Yes, indeed. Well, the Nikon Z9 started its life, well, coming on almost two years ago. That is for us, the general public. We know that it was probably something like three to five years in development. So at this stage, it's actually existed in some form or another for probably something like six years. This camera, when first announced, Nikon said it's gonna be the best, fastest, highest performing camera Nikon has ever created. And Nikon did not fall short on that promise. We had never seen a camera that shot at 20 frames per second, 45 megapixels, nearer to 46 megapixels, so let's round it to there, at 20 frames per second raw. We'd never seen a camera that could pre-capture. In other words, you press the button and it's already buffering the images one second prior to that. So you can essentially, with your decision to take a shot, go back in time and perhaps capturing a critical moment. We've never seen 8K video. And another thing we've never ever seen in a Nikon is the fact that it does not have a mechanical shutter for the purpose of taking photographs. And this to me, at the time of hearing about this, before the camera was actually released, it was like, wow, that is a really exciting, really bold and potentially dangerous move for Nikon. What if that sensor's just not fast enough? In the year since this camera has launched, we've found out it does have the fastest readout for cameras in this class, running super, super fast. And you can shoot sports and wildlife with this camera, and I'm yet to see anywhere where it doesn't really function. Of course, rolling shutter will be in there at some point with ultra fast objects, but I haven't seen examples of it as yet, and I certainly haven't seen it in my own work. There's so much technology. There are so many ideas in this camera. And from the moment I picked it up, and you can watch this video that I made just shy of a year ago, where I basically said, this is new. This is a new paradigm. I can feel it. I can feel the power. And to me, it's literally a sensor with a super fast processor getting the information to the storage. And there's really not much in between. This is a super highway of sensor processor storage and it does it very, very quickly. It appears to do it the fastest on the market, and it can do it for a very, very long time without overheating. And of course, we know this camera can shoot 8K 60 RAW, and it can do it for up to two hours, although at this point in time, your media runs out before you get there. But I have shot standard 8K for two hours on a card, and yes, indeed, it can do it. This is a paradigm shift. This is a game changer. Not only did Nikon meet the market, but in so many aspects of this camera, they have exceeded all those around it. But that's ultimately, at the end of the day, not 
important to me personally. It is important to some. Me personally, what this camera means to me is I can take it out and I can shoot anything in any conditions. We recently did a shoot and it was raining. And I just said, look, we're gonna leave the gear out. I don't think it's gonna rain for too long. And we will continue shooting as soon as the rain stops. I was not concerned. And this is the sort of confidence that a camera like this gives you. And let's talk about the sensor and the speed of photography. Well, yep, you can get 20 frames per second in RAW and you can get up to 120 frames per second, full frame, 11 megapixel JPEGs. And you can see those in this video here. You can also now get DX or APS-C JPEGs and it's just shy of 20 megapixels at 60 frames per second. So 20 megapixels, 60 frames per second. Since the launch of this camera, one of the most impressive things that Nikon has done is to continue to deliver firmware updates. And these just haven't been everyday firmware updates. These have been powerhouses, delivering major features that weren't there and largely weren't promised on the launch of this camera. And the only one that was that I can think of off the top of my head was, of course, the 8K RAW at 60 frames per second. Now, my belief is that was always supposed to be there on launch. They were just still working some things out. But my point being, we have had major firmware updates, adding things like pre-capture, as well as things like high-res zoom, and so much more with constant improvements in all sorts of things like focusing and focusing quicker, focusing more accurately, not thinking about the background, but thinking about the foreground or the subject at hand. I do believe that the in-body image stabilization has been improved and this goes on. And this to me comes back to the architecture of this camera. You get it in your hand and it just feels like it's got endless power. It feels like a V8. Doesn't really matter what you throw at it. Doesn't really matter how big a trailer you put on the back. It's still got lots of power. This is what the Z9 feels like. So to me, this bodes super well for the future, for what Nikon do next with the XP7. And if rumors are anything to go by, we may well have some version of a Z9 in potentially a Z8, and hopefully not too long off, because there's lots of folks that would love a Z9, but they don't want to pay the price of a Z9. And thus, a Z8 or whatever else it might be is a great step, some of the way, but not all of the way. It's a lovely segue, which gets me to the price of the Z9. Now, this is where I am going to talk about the competition just for a moment. We have the R3 and the A1, and they're roughly around the same price, although at time of launch, I do believe that they were both more expensive than the Z9. So the Z9 is super well priced as a flagship. It delivers all the features you could possibly want, like all of them. And I'm not going to talk about focus because it is up there. It is up there and from everybody who I've spoken to who I trust, it's basically different systems do focus in different ways. So let's move on from that because this camera is all of that and so much more. Like I said, it is an 8K cine camera. I actually shoot client work in 8K and that allows me to crop around the frame and give them the sense that we are doing a multicam shoot all by just shooting in 8K. So it basically raises the perceived production values. It's a super useful tool. Also allows you to crop if things go on in the background or whatever else. It's a tool that gives you scope. It gives you wriggle room. It gives you opportunity. And it also gives you an absolutely gorgeous image. Whether you're at 8K rendering to 4K or whether you wanna do a slow zoom, a slow creep in in post, and you end up in at 6K, but you're putting that down to 4K. This gives you scope. So the reality is this is an astonishing video tool considering where it sits in the market. It is not actually shaped or looking like a cine camera, yet it can perform like a cine camera very, very well. 
But of course, you get a super high-end stills camera as well. You get both of these things in the one box with class-leading specifications and priced, well, as I said, on time of launch, a little less than its peers, and it's still priced extremely well. And a year on, you can get some pretty significant discounts if you wait for the right moment or you look around. I just can't imagine what Nikon is gonna give us with the cameras that follow after this and how affordable they will be in six to 12 months from their launch. The Z9, it's everything I need in a camera. I, I, I could basically go on safari around the world and know that this could capture everything I would ever need. And sure, on one or two specs, it might not be the absolute top of the heap, but on another 97, it absolutely is. So on, on, on balance of everything that you might look at, although I can't think of many specs that it's, uh, it's not ahead except maybe MP, but you know, the A7R5 is not fast like this. So this is absolutely a class leading camera today with, let's be honest, no signs of anybody coming along with anything in particular to be surpassing it anytime soon. And that's fine because guess what? The R3, the A1, and the Z9 are all spectacular cameras. And in Canon's case, the R5 is probably part of that conversation as well. Kind of need two cameras to get what this one gives you. But that's okay, that's the way it is. You can choose what you want based on your use case. Ultimately, this camera has delivered on Nikon's promise and more. As I said, from the moment it was in my hand, I could feel that it was a powerhouse. I could feel it was fast. I could feel that it had wriggle room left to do more. We are now up to firmware update 3.0 in less than one year. And I really feel like there's more that can come from high efficiency star. I also feel like there is just simply more when we look at some of the other camera brands, some of the things that's going on with technology, with computer controlled cameras. Because here the computer now is far more important than it was in the DSLR days. So with this being a computer with a sensor and storage, I feel like there's more that could happen here and some of the things that I've dreamed about, some of the things that I think this could have the power to do, whether Nikon ever chooses to do these sorts of things, are, for example, wireless. It's a computer. It's like a laptop. So why, for example, couldn't we have wireless audio? In other words, your interviewee is wearing their transmitter, it's being recorded, and the sound literally digitally goes straight into the camera. Now that would be way more efficient. You have less plugs, less things to worry about, less things to get wet, less things to charge. This to me would be super elegant camera making. And from my perspective, far better, far more useful than an intelligent hot shoe, which you need to protect, which has pins, which can be shorted. And once it breaks, if it breaks, I presume that's problematic. I'd love it all to be wireless. Imagine that you can connect your audio wirelessly. You can monitor your audio through the EVF and you can control every aspect of that audio without taking your eye off the EVF. You don't have to look on the top of the camera to see what's going on to the receiver, for example. I've got no idea if this is what the future holds, but I really would love to see audio just go straight in here and I don't have to add anything extra in the way of hardware or cabling things to think about. This is a computer. It has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So I reckon these sorts of things are possible and it just comes down to whether Nikon decide or think they want to do it. But let's think about it. Nikon have said they want to go more and more into the video space and into the creator space. And this is absolutely the sorts of things that would make creators' lives easier. You're not even plugging anything in. You're just turning on one transmitter and it's receiving. Nikon, if you're listening, I think that's an awesome idea. And I think, I mean, I, th I think, I, I don't know exactly what hardware is in here and what type of Bluetooth and so on, whether there are versions within the ratified versions. But if it's possible, amazing. 
So I think there's more to come. I think there's more firmware to come. I think there's way more that the computer in the Z9 is capable of, and it just comes down to how far Nikon want to push it. Who knows? Again, to reiterate, if the rumors around the Z8 are correct, and it's similar to a Z9, well, they may end up having very similar firmware. And if they have similar firmware, it would mean that development of the firmware for the Z9 and the Z8 would be shared. And thus, you can spend more time and money developing it because it's going across more systems. I do think that Nikon are super committed to the XP7 slash Z9 slash whatever is next platform. I think they've thrown an absolute truckload at making this spectacular in all the ways I've talked about and more. And I think another way that they're continuing to support this platform and move into other areas, this grip makes using this camera as a video camera another whole step easier. And it's hard to explain unless you've done a lot of video work in the past and then you use something like this and then you go, oh, wow, that's just, it just feels right. It's small, but it's a really important link in the chain of what I feel like is coming next, of what I feel like the future holds and the fact that Nikon are super committed to this platform. I'm excited. I'm excited seeing something like this because it's a little bit left of field. It's a little bit like, this is not a core product for us, but is it? Is it signaling the direction that they're heading? And I mean, really, we don't need signals. They've stated it clearly in some of their presentations over the last year or two, that video is a space that they really, really want to get into more. And here it is. These two items here are really showing us what the intention is. Ridiculous video spec here, and amazing tools that makes the job of the cinematographer, the content creator, the documentarian, tools that make it easier. I love where this story is going, and I can't wait to see the next installment. Powerhouse of a camera, gives me my 46 megapixels, gives me my 8K, works in any conditions, has a long battery life, has extraordinary speed, extraordinary endurance, best in class ergonomics. And we cannot forget the Z mount's capacity for adapting lenses. The Z9 being the absolute pinnacle of this. Not only do we have anecdotal evidence that lenses are driven faster when it comes to autofocus, but of course we now have stabilization with lenses that never were stabilized. And with the Z9, it appears to be an epically massive stabilization unit. And when it comes to adapting third party lenses, well, there is a whole range of lenses, which includes Sony E-mount. I have tested one of Sony's latest lenses, the 70-200 2.8 G Master version 2 on the Z9 in an upcoming video. And I can tell you, this lens runs ridiculously fast, even when adapted, even when not native. The Z9 coupled with this Sony lens, well, <laughs> you could get a Z9 to run it. You just simply can't go wrong with this system. Now, I don't say this because I want you to change. That's not why I'm saying it. I'm saying it because this is my experience with this camera after a year. I just simply have 100% confidence when I'm ever out shooting. I just simply have no fear, no, no trepidation, just excitement and desire to create and that this will do whatever I wanna do and it will deliver speed, resolution, outcomes in all conditions, bright sunlight, darkness, it's there. It's there for everything. And we could briefly touch on lenses. Obviously we've had an epic amount of long lenses released by Nikon. We've got all of sort of the, the, the basic stables, the Trinity, some primes, and now we've got more high-end primes coming. I'm guessing the 85 is a 1.2. It certainly looks like it when you look on the roadmap. And alongside that is also a 35 1.2. The glass that you can match with these cameras is extraordinary. Again, it's, it's best in class along with some of its peers and some of it is class leading. 
like the 400 and 600 with the built-in teleconverters, which just give you these amazing lenses. And sure, yeah, they're expensive. Don't get me wrong, they're expensive, but they give you a lot. They give you a lot, and they give it to you in one lens. And a lot of people want to trade size and space and weight. They're very happy to have a 400 and almost a 600 in one lens or a 600 and an 840 in another lens. It's just smart, and it just makes the job of photographers easier. One year with the Z9, I'm very pleased. Uh, I've thought very, very hard about purchasing a second one. I'd like it. I'm gonna wait and see what is next. Who knows, you know, depending on where that lands, it'll either be what's next or a Z9, another Z9. This, this is how much I love working with this camera. The most recent shoot, client shoot that I did was an event and I was shooting the Z9 and the Z6 II. It's hard to choose sometimes whether I was going to go the Z7 or the Z6 II, but I decided that I'd be shooting a lot of long lens stuff. So I had the 70 to 200 on here shooting APS-C most of the time, which gives me 20 megapixels and the Z6 II gives me 24 megapixels. So it basically made the files similar. The Z6 II was doing the wide stuff, but normally I like two cameras that match. So I can't wait to get whatever that is next and we'll see. In the past, I owned two D3s, two D800s, two D810s. I still have my two D850s. The Z9, not only is it the best all-rounder camera on the market today, bar none, from my opinion, but it's also an absolutely spectacular video camera and an absolutely spectacular stills camera, equally, both, separately, in its own right. You kind of can't go wrong. And whatever Nikon do next, if they deliver more of this DNA and they give it to us for even less money, wow. Wow. All right, everybody. Well, this is just an overview. This is just my feelings about the Z9. I didn't want it to be super spec heavy and spectacular camera. Hasn't let me down, hasn't missed a beat in the last year. Love it. I look forward to all of your thoughts. I know a lot of you out there have your Z9s. I really wanna hear from as many of you as possible. I love hearing your stories. Let me know what lenses you most enjoy on your Z9. Take care and I'll see you very soon. And if this is, by the way, your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share and please like this video. Okay, bye for now.